The cynics said this would never happen, that you'd never see Silicon Valley's Tesla Motors make it to showroom availability. Well, I must be imagining things because here I am in Tesla's store in Menlo Park, California. Now, as you can see, this Menlo Park showroom is more than just a showroom. Behind me, that's final assembly. The cars arrive from England, where they're built up in partnership with Lotus, but they have no powertrain yet. Then here, they add the four components of the powertrain, which is electric motor, the battery pack, the controlling computer, and the single-speed gearbox. Now, how do you charge one of these guys? Let's check it out. Here's a special charging cable that goes to a special 220-volt, 70-amp charger you can have installed in your home. And the way you connect it is like so. Hook up that line right there and get it directly on the groove. Then rotate to lock. Blue means it's talking to the car. The car and the charger are communicating. You'll hear some relays. There's one and there's the other one. Now it's charging and they'll start to blink amber. The pulsing slows down as the car gets closer to a full charge. And when it's fully charged, it glows green. Now, charging times. From dead empty, about three and a half hours full up on a high current charger. Overnight on a 220 but lower current charger, like 24 amps. And if you only have a 120 volt household outlet, it could take 24 to 30 hours, but that's in a worst case scenario. The rear on these cars is the business end. Back here is the engine management computer. That's under this cover right here. In front of that, this metal case is full of batteries, lithium ion cells, about 6,800 of them liquid cooled. That's where almost 400 volts of juice comes from, which powers a motor down under here, which has 240 some odd horsepower, 276 foot pounds of torque, and all of it available from RPM one. Now, in terms of cabin tech, you got a fair amount for a Spartan sports car. Over here on the far side is a status monitor that shows you what's going on with the drivetrain and the car overall. In here is a single DIN slot, and if you go for the premium audio system, you get this JVC Chameleon head unit, which we've liked a lot in our reviews. It comprises nav, satellite radio, iPod, just about any audio source you want. But again, it's off-the-shelf stuff. Up front, some more interesting parts. Check it out. There's an aluminum finned radiator with two cooling fans. Looks like something out of a retrofitted Pantera. Well, that's there not to cool the engine, but to cool, well, the engine, the batteries. And right here is the world's biggest travel adapter. This guy converts the car's native 400 volts down to 12, so you can run things like the stereo and plug in your cell phone adapter. Now enough yak, let's go for a drive. The Roadster is fully baked for the first time in its young history. Tesla went through an embarrassing hell getting the transmission right. Now they say it's good. A new Borg Warner single speed gearbox, not transmission, so tight they say it rings additional range from the car. 244 miles now on a full charge. You're looking at a scant 2,700 some odd pounds thanks to a carbon fiber body over an aluminum tub. In fact, 36% of this car's weight is just the battery. 0 to 60 in 3.9 tends to speak for itself. But it's a different kind of fast because it's all torque. The ride was much more comfortable than I recalled from earlier evaluation copies I've been in. Steering is a la go-kart. I don't think you'll drive a car that feels more like it's on rails. The little display panel down on the left, if you can crane your neck to see it, holds the gauges of the 21st century, as well as the button for performance mode, which is sort of like M mode in a hot BMW. You'll go faster, but the battery will drain faster as well. The cabin's tight and not entirely there if you're over six feet. I could not see the top half of the analog gauges, no matter what I did with my head. Everywhere you go, people wave, yell encouragement, and generally stare. Part of the value of this car is buying into its moment in history. Okay, so if you're convinced, here's the story. 109,000 base for the Roadster. Another couple grand for the premium audio. That's the rig that has the nav and all the various input sources. I think I would definitely do that. Then you gotta wait. It's about a 12 month backlog as of right now, late 08. But Tesla hopes to double or more their monthly output in early 09. 